Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2017. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. And we're back. This is SiliconANGLE Media's production of theCUBE. I'm here with Keith Townsend, I'm Stu Miniman. Keith, I don't know about you, but one of the things that really excites me when I get to come to events like this is talking to the users, talking about the practitioners, what they're using, how they're using it, and so I'm really happy to welcome to the program, first time guest, Brett Ruth, who is the Server, Storage, and Virtualization Supervisor at BKD. Brett, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, so BKD, um, I, I, I know you're, you're uh, you know, big in your field, but sure. th there might be some people out there that aren't familiar uh, with your organization. M maybe just give us the, the thumbnail uh, of the company, how long you've been there, and, and your role there. Sure, uh, BKD is the number 12 uh, accounting firm in the United States, uh, 36 offices, uh, uh, net revenue 564 million, uh, tax audit, corporate finance, wealth advisors, um, technology services, I mean, that's BKD in a nutshell. All right, and, and your role in the organization? My role is, a, is a kind of the server supervisor. I have a team of seven sysadmins who report to me. Uh, we take care of anything from on the Windows server to Linux server to our Nutanix environment, uh, our, our VMware environment, um, our Isilon storage environment, and uh, all the applications that live on those. All right, so, so, so Brett, you know, one of the things I'm, I'm, I'm sure you'll find, your stuff doesn't change, you don't have acquisitions <laughs> to integrate, uh, you don't have new technology to be thrown all the time. Sure. I'm sure every year they just say, how much more budget and how many more people do you want? Exactly. Uh, so what, what it, bring us in the reality. What's, what, what's your world like? What are some of the, the, the big challenges? Kind of, I, I, I say first if you can from just kind of the you know, industry standpoint and sure. how, does that, how does that impact what you're doing? Sure, so uh, BKD is a, is a growth firm, so we look at you know, business acquisitions yeah. when we can. Um, we look at those, we actually completed one not that long ago in Chicago, uh, we expanded there. So and each one's always different, and um, you know, different technologies, some, some of them, uh, those acquisitions are a couple servers, some of them are completely cloud-based, some of them are, are a mix of in between. So having a platform, uh, when we settle on with Nutanix has kind of helped be able to make those integrations a little bit easier. Um, but no, every, every year, you know, budget cycle comes around and what's, in, what's the initiatives the firm wants to do? And every year it's different, it's fun, it's, it's, you know, it's challenging to have you know, different and new things we have to tackle every year. So when choosing these platforms, one, quick question around the organization. Sure. Not a bunch of knowledge workers, how, how many, uh, what's the head count? Uh, around 2,600. 2,600, so you guys, in your IT organization, you work for the bean counters of bean counters. Sure. <laughs> so they understand ROI, yep. TCO. Yep. When it comes to selecting these technologies, how much pressure are you under to do less with more, and prove that you're doing, I'm sorry, do more with less, mm -hmm. and prove that you're doing more or less? Sure, and that, that comes up during the budget cycles. I mean, there's a, a large amount of time that's spent of what's next year's initiatives, what does that server landscape look like, you know, does there a new product that comes out that requires a headcount increase or not? Or is it a new application we need to stand up? And every year that comes around of, and the questions come, well, maybe the firm didn't have a good year, maybe the firm had a better year. So we, you know, the budget gets adjusted based on that. But uh, more times than not, if the, the firm recognizes that, you know, putting money into IT, you know, does nothing but help the business grow. Mm. Yeah. So as long as we spend it wisely, we usually can we can get accomplished. Uh, all right, Brett. So I, I want you to take us inside. You know, I, I hate to do it, but the budgeting thing because sure. oh. one, one of the promises of you, you said you're using Nutanix used to be okay. This year, up oh, it's time for the server refresh. Next year, wait, no, you don't have any server budget. You know, we're right. we're, we're doing some storage add-ons or things like that. You might get some budget here or there if you need it or if there's emergency, but you got to justify that, mm -hmm. the promise of you know, a pool of resources should be, well, I'm consolidating a number of pools, and mm -hmm. therefore, I should be able to be more agile, more flexible, right. I'm buying in smaller you know, uh, chunks rather right. than bigger chunks. Yep. What's your experience been on kind of that, that purchasing from you know, that relationship with the finance side of the business? Sure, so uh, when I started at BKD, I've, I've been in there about five years. Um, it was a traditional three-tier architecture when we rolled into it. And the firm was growing at such a rate that we were running into those physical limitations of the hardware. 
And you know, it's never a fun game to, to go ask the CIO an unbudgeted sand purchase. It, you know, I do that a couple years in a row and <laughs> it gets harder and harder to ask those questions, right? So we, we finally came to a point as a company of we need to do something different. And you know, through a research you know, project I had and, you know, and, and my team all had to do to accomplish it, uh, we landed on Nutanix and landed on a hybrid converged infrastructure. And wh what we can do is we build those quote unquote Lego blocks. So now there's not a, a big giant purchase of a, of a SAN or a, a new set of, uh, of UCS chassis or, or whatever the product might be. It's a, I know this quarter I need this amount of nodes or I know for this project I'm going to need this and I can just build and add on when I need to. So it makes the budgeting and those unbudgeted purchases a lot more easier to take. So much of the messaging from day one, day two, it's aimed kind of at you, the, you're, you're on the ground, you have to deal with not only the engineers that implement the technology, mm -hmm. but also the executives that approve the purchases. Sure. So a lot of the messaging here has been for you. How have you received it, and what's your impression of, the, of VMware's messaging around, take your favorite topic? Right. Um, you know, a, a lot of cloud talks been happening here, and a lot of, of DevOps is, has been you know talked about here, and, and way to improve that. And Biggity has an internal uh, de IT development team, so a lot of those things that I can I can take away here, and and you know and try to see if I can help our our dev team however I can. Um, a lot of the messaging is just seeing where the where the industry is going, not just VMware, but everyone on the solutions floor. I mean, that's a lot of a lot of my time here is, is research uh, and seeing what products that what projects that I know we have to complete in the next year, fiscal year or two, and then what products are out there I can just buy. All right, Brett, can, can you bring us into your application portfolio? What sure. sits on the Nutanix platform? What doesn't? I hear you said you got you got a uh, scale out NAS platform. Right. Also, you talked about some developers there. I'd, I'd right. love to understand how you figure out what goes where, where you are in building that out. H how many how many nodes you have? If you can share. Sure. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the Isilon is six nodes in each data center. Uh, the Nutanix is twenty six nodes in each data center. Um, we're probably ninety nine point nine percent virtualized. I mean, I. Can, the only thing I don't, I think we don't have virtualized is we still have a, a physical domain controller outside of both, just from sheer. If everything is off, I have one point I can get back into, right? But uh, Exchange, SharePoint, our SQL is all virtualized. Uh, the the Isilon is really kind of the unstructured file pool that we can put map drives, we can put blob storage from our SharePoint environment lands onto it, flat files from our SQL land onto it, and yeah, everything runs on our our Nutanix. Okay. So going into that developer relationship, yep. you know, Nutanix, I've talked to these guys before about their ideal of being a cloud company. Mm -hmm. So developers, when they hear the term cloud, right. how, what's the impact of you on your, your role when you have Nutanix, a cloud company, and your developers asking for cloud? Sure, it's, a, uh, it, it's an interesting question because you know, we try to phrase it as, BKD, we now have an internal cloud. We have a, an enterprise cloud, you know, with the term private cloud. And we, you know, we can provide those instant resources to DevOps when they need it, depending on if they have a new set of QA boxes need to be stood up. Um, but you know, there, are, there is some projects in, that we're looking at of, you know, is it AWS or is it Azure or is it Google's cloud? Of, are the things that make sense to go out there versus keeping them in-house? And those come up as a, as a as-need basis. So, DevOps. DevOps. So, <laughs> when we talk about DevOps, what are the pain points that you guys, because that's a big topic. Do right. I go all the way as far as Netflix <laughs> and DevOps, all the things that we say? Sure. Or what have you guys targeted to say, okay, here's where the value add is in the enterprise? Sure. I think we're still, that's still one of those things that our development team's looking at. You know, I think it, it really depends on the application and what the business is looking for. I mean, there's, there's been some products that internally that the team's released that you know, make sense to stay on-prem. The next project I find out in a month from now might be something that's perfect for the cloud. And I, I think they just take that on a kind of case-by-case -case basis. All right, Brett, you've got a you know, portfolio of partners that, that you're working with sure. here. What's on, what's on your list of to-dos for them? You know, what are you looking for from the ecosystem to make you know, your life easier and, and, and help? Sure, um, 
always looking for stable code releases. I think any engineer would, would love stable code releases. You know, for the most part, everybody gets that. We're always going to have issues. Yeah, but a, a, anybody you want to call out for not giving you stable <laughs> code <laughs> releases? <laughs> I can say everybody because, I mean, that's everyone will do that. But, uh, no, I think it's, it's uh, continuing to improve the product, continuing to make it, you know, it's that do, you know, do more with less, right? So I can't have, you know, two or three dedicated people work on the virtualization environment. They have to be multi-skilled, you know? And my, you know, my team that I have, you know, my, my seven sysadmins are, are all great, you know, probably some of the best guys I've worked with, but, you know, they, we all have to wear multiple hats, even, you know, sometimes maybe we don't want to. So having those products come into the environment that make it easier for them, and then just seeing how those co-releases come out to just make our lives even better. Yeah, uh, just, just real quick, can you say whose hardware you, your Nutanix is on? It's uh, Super Micro, it's from okay, Nutanix. Okay, so it, yep. it's the basic thing, things. Yep. Uh, this morning in the keynote, got a big laugh talking about some of the co-opetition that goes on just between Dell, EMC, a, you know, and VMware, sure. and some of their partnerships. Uh, some of your partners get along better than others. Is that something that impacts you, something you think about at all? Um, it's definitely, be, being a Nutanix guy coming into VMworld this year has definitely been an interesting experience. Yeah. It's, um, they're, 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 yeah, it's that cohabitation that, that happens between the two, but you know, at the end of the day, I, I still have servers to run, I have an environment to maintain for BKD, and you know, if I need something done, I know I can go to them and, and they'll help work with me on it. So, the show floor this year, VMware, just as massive as, as it's been all the yeah. way. VMware, it's all about the ecosystem. How important is this large ecosystem to your independent, your everyday operations of your environment? Sure, I mean it's the um, never know what the next project that comes out or the next thing the business wants to get, do or the next acquisition comes up. Maybe there's a, a product that I don't have in house that needs to take care of it. Um, and then having having this many vendors that I can go and, and talk with over these these couple of days has been great because it's I go back I can now go back to the team and go. Man, I didn't think about this, and this product would help solve that, or, or two months from now something comes around, and I go, oh yeah, I talked to these guys, and go flip through the business cards and the, the paper stuff we take home and, you know, and call them up. Yeah. I love, yeah, I love that even as a Nutanix customer and the VMware, yep. the co-opetition that you, you still find value in the overall. Oh ecosystem. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Brett, any of the you know, either announcements or kind of new things coming out in the market, anything catching your eye? You said you're bringing that back to the office. Um, the, uh, I, you're gonna, I, forgive me, I can't remember the name, but the, um, the, uh, the malware kind of virus scanner that uh, VMware, re that they were talking about, the PAL was talking about yesterday, that kind of really was a, that, you, being able to use that AI to figure out, you know, at a base level what, I mean, what military code is and isn't was, was be an awesome game changer if, you know, it works out how it looks to be. Yeah, absolutely. No shortage of new things to, to, to look in, into. Right. Brett Ruth, PKD, really appreciate you sharing yep. your viewpoint, everything going on uh, inside you. Really appreciate you coming on. Nope, thank you guys. Uh, hope to catch up with you sometime in the future. Uh, for Keith Townsend and I'm Stu Miniman, we'll be back with lots more coverage here from VMworld 2017. You're watching theCUBE.